two further aerial pioneers of 1919, Ross and Keith Smith, were seen smiling together before achieving the first aeroplane flight from England to Australia. They left England in a snowstorm and must have been glad to do so. The other half of this picture is the return of Miss Amy Johnson from Australia in 1929. She is being led home in triumph by an Imperial Airways liner to the great airport at Croydon. It is dusk and we see the lights of the aerodrome and dimly the shadow of a great crowd assembled to welcome her. Here's Amy Johnson, the airwoman. Here's Maggie Bonfield, the stateswoman. And here's poor Jason, the aeroplane, tired but home at last. In this diminutive David, we pass to a modern Goliath of the air, Dormier X. Now those 12 engines have stopped running, we can tell you something about her. Inside that vast hull, there is room for passengers, crew and freight, far in excess of the load carried by any other flying boat. Our cameraman, rowing painfully round her, has succeeded in proving to you that the Dornier X is certainly tails up. The Southampton flying boat is a smaller and more agile member of the same family. The engines that you hear are Rolls-Royce. This machine is an aerial hybrid, a cross between land and sea, the amphibian. It is a Saunders Row now taking the water with the famous aircraft designer, Mr. A.V. Row, on board. Mrs. Vickers' works are in a state of great activity. Apparently they are thinking of the Schneider Trophy contest and have the responsibility of constructing the Vickers submarine racer heavily on their mind. 1931. Squadron leader Olabar out to make a trial flight round the Schneider course in a fairy firefly machine. He's only going to travel about 200 miles an hour today, what is referred to at Calshot as low speed flying so that we see him at the moment in merely a low-brow frame of mind.
has made a characteristically fine landing and will shortly no doubt step with relief into one of the high speed machines which are his special charge. Flight Lieutenant Dry, the engineer officer, is giving a Gloucester Napier a run over. This machine won the Schneider Trophy in 1927. They needn't worry about eavesdroppers. The secrets of that conversation were buried forever in this. Let me introduce you to Flight Lieutenant Boothman, winner of this year's Schneider Trophy race. Notice the delicate handing accorded by the mechanics to the machine, which as a veteran trophy winner is treated with great respect. This has given us a great rest. It was obviously no use trying to shout down a Schneider engine. Here is a much better introduction to Flight Lieutenant Boothman, although he looks just a bit grim. That pad strapped to his knee has been used for writing notes on his test and may supply us with a reason. You saw the winning machine of 1927, so we now show you the winner of the 1929 Schneider Trophy, the Vickers Supermarine Rolls-Royce S6A. The winner of 1931 now greets us face to face. So perfect is the streamlining that seen from the angle at which it meets the wind, this machine is almost invisible. The actual winning engine is here seen suspended in mid-air inside that holy of holies, the flight sheds at Calshot. This triumphant exit of the Vickers Supermarine Rolls-Royce S6B from her cradle at Calshot was followed shortly after this picture was taken by a still more triumphant homecoming on which she carried with her the Schneider Trophy won outright, the world's speed record of 408.8 miles per hour and the applause and admiration of engineers throughout the world. this picture the conquest of the air. Having seen Britain's contribution to that conquest, we will appropriately allow this, her latest offspring, to have the last word. <laughs>